Hello, welcome to History Facts. In today's video we are talking about intimacy at Versailles. Relax and have a good time. When Louis was 14 years old in 1553, his mother, Anne of Austria decided that it was time for him to lose his virginity. She arranged for one of her ladies-in-waiting, Catherine Bellia, to spend two years sexually educating him, and then rewarded her by making her the Baroness of Beauvais. In 1654, while he was still sleeping with Bellius, Louis began a relationship with Olympe Mancini, one of the five nieces of Cardinal Mazarin, who, along with Anne, was running the government. That affair lasted until 1657, when she got married to the Comte de Soissons, but they resumed their relationship in 1660 for about a year. Her oldest son was born just six months after her marriage, raising the possibility that he was an unacknowledged bastard of Louis. Her feelings for Louis seemed to have been quite intense, because she repeatedly displayed jealousy toward his later loves. The Early Years in 1658, Louis turned his eye toward Marie Mancini, Olympe's younger sister. He fell deeply in love with her, and gossip began to spread that he might marry her. This upset Anne, who wanted to arrange his marriage to Maria Theresa of Spain, and it also, somewhat surprisingly, upset Olympe and Marie's mother. As a result, Marie was sent home to Italy, where she got married in 1661. On her wedding night, her husband remarked that he was surprised to discover she was still a virgin, so apparently Louis' interest in her somehow never got consummated. In 1658, Louis also had a brief fling with the unnamed daughter of a gardener, who gave birth to a daughter who was never recognized. In 1660, Louis married his first wife, Maria Theresa. She was his double first cousin, her father was Anne's brother, while his father was the brother of Maria Theresa's mother. He appears to have been faithful to her for about a year, but after that he had both brief flings and long-term affairs for the rest of her life. That didn't stop him from producing six children with her, although she had the enormous misfortune to outlive all but one of them. Maria Theresa had little choice except to tolerate her husband's numerous infidelities, and she even managed to develop friendships with two of his mistresses. Harrietta and Louise. A year after Louis' marriage, his brother Philippe married Harrietta of England, Noemi Schmidt, a rather attractive woman who became good friends with Louis. Rumors began to circulate that they were sleeping together. Even by the standards of the French court, this would have been a genuine scandal, because there was a considerable difference between a married man sleeping with an unmarried woman, which was considered simply fornication, and a married man sleeping with a married woman, which was considered adultery, additionally, it would have meant cuckolding his own brother. Since Harrietta was the sister of Charles II of England, a major scandal around her might well have had diplomatic ramifications. To make Louis visiting Harrietta more acceptable, they asked Olympe, a close friend of Harrietta's, to introduce Louis to one of Harrietta's ladies, Louise de la Valia, Sarah Winter so that Louis could visit Harrietta while pretending to court Louise. The naive Louise, not realizing that she was a pawn in this intrigue, fell in love with Louis and Louis found her sincerity and innocence so charming that he reciprocated her feelings. This relationship was the first of Louis' affairs to have real legs. It continued until 1667 and produced five children, the last two of whom were eventually acknowledged the other three dying in infancy. Louis kept the relationship a secret, at least formally, until 1666, when his mother died. At that point, he made the relationship public and Louise became his first matress en Titer, loosely translated as, official mistress. Soon after Anne's death, Louis took communion with both Maria Theresa and Louise alongside him, a clear statement of Louis's position. Louise was deeply religious, and while she loved Louis, she felt tremendous shame over what she was doing. She disliked their relationship being so open. At the same time, however, she wanted her position and was jealous of his attention to other women, so she wasn't quite so unwilling to be his mistress as Versailles presents it. 
she repeatedly fled to convents, and in 1667, after the birth of their fifth child, Louis essentially terminated the relationship, although he kept her on as matress en tighter. Eventually, in 1674, he permitted Louise to join a Carmelite convent. By this point, she had become good friends with Maria Theresa, who presented her with her veil during the veiling ceremony at the convent and continued to visit her off and on. Despite having a wife and a mistress, Louis I still wandered. Olympe Mancini hoped that, if he could be pried away from Louise de la Valia, Louis might return to her. So she schemed to put one of his wife's ladies-in-waiting, and Lucy de Mudhudencourt, in his way, and it worked, at least briefly. Louis became quite infatuated with her. The Queen employed Madame de Nevales to supervise the young ladies around them. Nevales went to extreme lengths to keep the young men of the court away from her charges, up to installing iron bars on the windows and chimneys of their rooms. Despite that, Louis climbed down a chimney to see Anne-Marie, and dismissed Madame de Nevales from court. But Anne-Lucy was interested in someone else, and apparently resisted Louis' attentions. The Queen Mother became worried that Louis' pursuit of Anne-Lucy would prove embarrassing to Maria Theresa, so she ultimately dismissed Anne-Lucy from court. Louis consoled himself by briefly taking up with Anne de d'Argencourt, one of his mother's ladies-in-waiting. But she was also the lover of the Duc de Richelieu, which irritated Louis enough that the affair didn't last long. Madame de Montespan In 1666, not long after things with Greymont ended, Francoise Athenaeus, the Marquise de Montespan, began pursuing Louis. She was a married woman, with two children, but also strikingly beautiful, witty, well-read, intelligent, and cultured. She was also the cousin of Born de Ponce, and the younger sister of Gabrielle de Rochechort, who may have briefly occupied Louis' bed at one point. Quite a number of men were interested in her, but she wanted Louis. She wisely cultivated friendships with Louis the Grand Dauphin, Maria Theresa, and Louise de la Valia. When both women became pregnant at the same time, they made the mistake of asking Montespan to help them entertain Louis at private dinners, and that gave her the opening she needed. By the end of 1666, she was rapidly displacing Louise in the king's affections, much to Louise's frustration. What must have particularly galled Louise was that the king now used her as cover for his relationship with Montespan, a bit the way he had used her initially to cover his friendship with Harrietta. He moved Montespan into a room connected to Louise, so that he could visit Montespan while maintaining the appearance of visiting Louise. Unlike Louise, who did her best to stay out of the spotlight, Montespan openly vied with the Queen as a rival. Although Montespan was legally separated from her husband in 1774, the fact that she was committing adultery led her to become the focus of opposition from the Catholic Church and in 1774, a priest refused to give her communion at Easter. Despite Louis' efforts to lean on the priest's superiors, the church hierarchy held firm and achieved a brief separation between the two. So the conflict between Bishop Boswit and Louis in the show has a basis in fact, but Boswit was not so foolish as to try to orchestrate a grand campaign against Louis, nor was the priest poisoned by one of Montespan's allies. Stiff competition for Louis' attention. Apparently unable to decide between the two women, Louis suddenly took up with Marie Angelique de Scarales, who was described as being quite beautiful but stupid as a basket. She was a lady in waiting to the Duchesse d'Orleans. At first the affair was kept quite secret, but then Louis appeared at court wearing ribbons that matched ones she was wearing. She was noticed wearing a cloak made from the same material as his. He became quite infatuated with her, throwing a string of parties for her and taking her to the ballet frequently. Montespan bitterly commented that Louis had three mistresses, herself in title, Scarales in bed, and Maintenon in his heart. Montespan took her revenge by having a pair of bears let into Scarales' apartments, causing the young woman to flee in terror. Scarales gave birth to a stillborn boy, and although Louis rewarded her handsomely for being wounded in his service, 
By making her the Duchess of Fontanges, he had already started to tire of her. She died not long after this, in 1681, at the age of 19, probably because of complications from her labor. But word quickly circulated that she had been poisoned, and Montespan clearly had the motive to do so. Montespan was deeply implicated in the affair, although no solid proof of her involvement has ever surfaced. But it marked the end of her reign as Maitris E.N. Titer, although Louis allowed her to stay at court until 1691. He does not seem to have believed that she was involved in the affair. Scarales was the last woman to be a sustained mistress for Louis. After her, his attention shifted toward Maintenon and to brief affairs with women who soon bored him. Madame de Maintenon triumphs. Gamine has the distinction of being Louis' last mistress. In the middle of 1683, Maria Theresa fell ill and died. Louis mourned her, remarking that, this is the first chagrin which she has given me. By this point, he was deeply involved with Madame de Maintenon but she had probably resisted his efforts to get her into his bed. Montespan was convinced that she was holding out simply as a way to build Louis order for her, but it is more likely that it was her religious beliefs that motivated her to deny him. But Maria Theresa's death cleared the way. Sometime between October of 1683 and January of 1684, Louis secretly married her. The marriage was never formally acknowledged, and she did not become queen. But their relationship was obvious. He gave her a lavish suite of rooms across the hallway from his own apartments, and he spent time with her every day from that point on. Thanks for watching. Do like, subscribe and comment.